Car- Carl's been learning Spanish. Really? Yes, yeah. Cameras are here? Right. <clears throat> Tú eres muy bonita. Welcome back to another episode of the Sergio Talks podcast. <laughs> it's your boy Sergio Talks. It's your boy Matt. It's your boy Carl. And today we're with Alex. <laughs> nice to see you all. <laughs> this is you too. Sergio, okay, you're laughing. No, bro, I got the giggles because like everything that's been happening in Tulum is like all like rushing through my mind at the same time That's a lot but we, before we get into this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe don't forget to give us five stars on amazon apple podcast and don't forget spotify. to spotify yeah. no yeah. i said spotify. spotify already you said spotify already. don't forget to give us five stars on amazon apple podcast and spotify i didn't say spotify okay Shh. and don't forget to check us out on patreon, patreon. <laughs> you guys get an exclusive episode every single friday you know what i'm saying would you rather that your girl gets fucked by one random guy every day or gets fucked by one of your boys once a week. Can I choose suicide? I think Carl could like help like with a scenario. Uh, what sound would it make? <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to the end of our trip. Yep. And today we are in Palacio. No, sorry. Palacio Papaya. Welcome to Palacio Papaya! Welcome, my friends. Palacio Papaya. Welcome back to a special episode. Come and take a look. Obviously, as soon as you come in, we have this beautiful dining table. Like if it's you, the whole family, Carl, me, Matt, like Carl in the kitchen. Hmm. We got Matt taking a selfie, as per usual. And if you guys are podcasters like us, well, you guys got a nice comfortable pit where you guys can set up all your equipment. But let me show you the upstairs. Oh, and that's the pool that Carl can't swim in. To be honest with you, I get I got here, aesthetic, amazing, food, amazing, people, amazing. So hey, I already know what to do. Here is a spot you gotta book, and I might see you guys here more often than. Lots of papaya. Thanks to our good friend Alex, second year in a row taking care of us now. Yeah. True. So yeah. if you could maybe kind of let the viewers know what, what is local luxury exactly? Yeah. So basically we represent some of the nicest properties in Tulum. So most, uh, most of them are villas, five, six, seven, up to 10 bedrooms. Um, we host groups, mm-hmm. we host friends, bachelorette parties. Um, and from there, you know, we offer a full experience. So if somebody just wants to book a villa with us, they can just book a villa and have the kind of Airbnb experience. You come in, you check in alone, you mm-hmm. do your own thing, or you can have the full experience and almost do it as if it was an all-inclusive. Mm-hmm. So when you book with us, you know, we get a, a concierge that reaches out directly to you and they help assist anything that you need throughout your stay from transportation, yachts, parties, um, 
private chef in the villa. So you can go from nothing or have Everything. the full, full experience. Yeah. Yeah, we use a little bit of like the room service. It was awesome. We got some food, food was delicious. Yeah. I had to order like three times. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Insane. Yeah. I loved it. And it's super easy, right? You scan it, done. The guy comes in. It's super easy. To- for, for, four, for four people, we ordered 26 burritos. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I mean, telling I guess, you. Were 23 of them for Carl? <laughs> wow. wow. I mean, I mean, I mean it, it could have been. It could have been. Uh, cool. um, so how, how did like local luxury first come to like, because you're from Montreal originally, right? Yeah. So from Montreal to Tulum to doing local luxury, there's something, there's a lot of things that happen in between, right? So how did you get started with all that? Um, basically about three years ago, my business partner, Nico, he came to Tulum, um, looking to enjoy himself because it was one of the only places that was open during COVID. Right, okay. And this place was going full steam, parties mm-hmm. everywhere, like COVID didn't exist at all. Right. Uh, so he came here to enjoy the freedom, enjoy the, the warmth, mm. um, and also look for an investment opportunity. So he came, he saw one of the, actually you guys stayed in it, uh, uh, Villa Mango. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He saw that investment project, went back to Montreal, found investors, they purchased the property, mm. and because we brokered the deal, uh, we got a percentage of ownership of the property. Mm. And that's kind of how it started. Our objective was to just come here one week, set it up, and then go back to Montreal and have it as passive income. Mm. And that was a rookie mistake. Really? <laughs> oh. yeah. We came here for one week, tried to set it up, uh, went back to Montreal. It had just finished being built, so we had just gotten the keys, and we like tried to set up best we could. Mm-hmm. Went back to Montreal, and then the first guest stayed during Christmas. The Wi-Fi wasn't working. Oh. The AC hadn't been installed yet. There was construction nearby, so like there was noise all the time. Mm. And I remember Nico calls me on Boxing Day, December twenty-sixth, in panicking, not sure what to do. Oh, the guests are super upset. They're gonna they're gonna give us a bad review. It's like first reservation starting off terribly yeah and i just told him all right you pay my flight and i leave tomorrow wow he was like all right do it and at 8 a.m i was on a flight came to tulum i went to see the guests got murdered for half an hour (laughs) yeah but i told him uh by the end of your stay i'll have fixed all the problems and then I want us to go get a drink and we'll, we'll be friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how, how long did the whole process take and you, from Nico coming and presenting like the first initial idea to then closing your first property to then having the first renter come in? Yeah, well, Nico reached out to me for my birthday, so November 10th. Then December, so a month later, he had reached out to me for an, a different project. Mm-hmm. He, had, he, was, uh, he was doing investment deals in, uh, in Quebec uh, with uh, the block. Mm-hmm. So he was doing that and he wanted to help my help to like rent them out to find um, people. people to rent them out for like a year or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Tulum project was in the long run. It was not even talks at first. And then yeah. in December, after a month of working together, he tells me like, hey, I'm going to Tulum next week to go see the new property we just bought. Mm-hmm. You want to come? I said, yeah, sure. And it was your first time going to Tulum? Yeah. Wow. Came here. Saw, saw with him, saw the property. Uh, as I said, we tried to set it up. And yeah. at that point, I wasn't even involved in like any of this. I just came mm-hmm. because we had just started working together and I wanted to see what it was about and like, right. why not come to Tulum if you're invited? Yeah. Um, and then from there, I came back December 26th and then COVID closed everything in Montreal after mm-hmm. that. Like I think it was the 27th or 28th. Yeah. And I just <sighs> said, you know what? <laughs> I'm out. I'm just, I canceled my flight home found an apartment here uh-huh. and was working on like my businesses, like what I, what I was doing in Montreal from my computer oh, in Tulum. Mm-hmm. And then once the owners of like other properties started reaching out for us to like take on management of theirs, yeah. I dropped everything and I focused a hundred percent in local luxury. I was on like, this. okay, we have like an opportunity to do something special here. Yeah. I mean, it must've been stressful making that adjustment, no? Like yeah. Leaving everything behind to just stay here full time. Yeah, I had my apartment back home so I had to find like, from here, I had to find people to rent it out. Yeah. I had my car. So yeah. I came to Tulum. I didn't know anybody or anything. Wow. Got my apartment. Uh, after two weeks, I got robbed. Here? Here or Yeah, where? I was in like a, I had no idea what the neighborhood was. And like, I picked the worst spot in like some lost neighborhood in the corner of Tulum, because yeah. I've never been. Um, and I come back and in my apartment, that was like super far, I come back. They had taken my passport, they had taken my phone, they had taken everything. I had been here two weeks. Oh, so, uh, that's stressful. Yeah. What'd you do after that? 
Uh, I had like one or two friends that I that I had met like yeah. super briefly. Yeah. And I like at one in the morning I called them and like thank God one of them picked up. Mm. And I said like oh, I just got robbed. I don't know what to do. Like please help me out. And I was able to stay at his place. Okay, fine. And then I found an apartment with him and we became really good friends. And he was my roommate for like six months after that. He was local. Uh, he's from Colombia, but from he was Columbia. living here like many people do. They come yeah, yeah. from all around the world and just stay in Tulum. For we a actually while. got saved also by, by a couple of people that, are, are, that were living here. Really? Yeah. The, uh, well, the first time that we, that we had came to Tulum, we had a bad, bad experience with our car getting towed. And luckily there was like a local girl that was, that was there to rescue us. Just like an angel. An she's, angel she's sent from, from nowhere. Above. <laughs> yeah, She's yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. can help you. I'm like, oh, 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 oh what do you mean you, I, you can help us? Like, is everything is set up right yeah, now? Yeah, that's happening. Who are you? Randomly, yeah. but no, out of good heart, she, she just helped us. And then, yeah. And a lot has changed from one year to the next. I yeah. feel like from, from since last year to this year. I mean, even you said the first place that, was, that you guys had, there was construction happening everywhere. Yeah. And now we come back like, like this year and there's so much like finished developments crazy projects and it, it, you, you could just see that the industry is booming right now right i always kind of said it's like they, they kind of brought like the whole like wellness retreat from like the ba the bali aesthetic and mm -hmm. brought it to tulum yeah. right rather but, than having to do like a 12 hour trip you could do a three four five hour flight and you, you get the the same aesthetic and now it's been two years in uh in tulum it's been how long in tulum yeah two it's gonna be two years upcoming in on december 26th it's gonna be wow. two years so uh, it's, it's still new Yep. Yeah, relatively new. We went, you know, now I know like Tulum is, as you know, is not very big. Yeah. It takes about 10 minutes to do the entire, uh, mm -hmm. the entire little city. Yeah. Um, and now, like I can, I feel safe going mm -hmm. anywhere at any time. You know, like I know the place. It's also become much safer than it was yeah. two mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. but let me ask you, since it's been two years you're here, what do you love about Tulum? Why, like, you've been here for so long? I'm a very simple guy. Mm -hmm. So, like, going around on a scooter without my shirt, yeah. Sunlight, beach. Keyword like, without the shirt. You like that. <laughs> <laughs> you like that. <laughs> Anytime you can get more sunlight and just like be outside. There's yeah, jungle, yeah. cenotes, the beach. Yeah. Um, and I've really gotten into like wellness while I've been here. Mm -hmm. And there's a really big scene for that. Like I, since I've been in Tulum, I've stopped drinking alcohol. I've stopped partying. I've gotten my life together. And, mm. you know, I kind of associate that to being here. Yeah. And I just love the... I don't know, it's a special energy mm, that, that you get what you're, when you're in Tulum. It's a bit chaotic because it's small and it's developing and, you know, there's, everything is building up, but yeah. it's also super special because it's, it's also small and it's, you know, a community and mm. it's very nice vibes, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of tourism too, so you get to meet people from across the world as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting to, to, to venture into the whole, like, mental health space because... Obviously, you also came at a time where a lot of people were suffering due to COVID. Yeah. So how, like, how did you find yourself adapting to essentially coming here alone, right? Like, did you feel like you experienced any kind of like loneliness? Like, did your mental health kind of take a hit at some point while you were here or? Um, to be honest, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. I'm a very social person and I came here and, you know, I spoke Spanish, mm. um, but not enough to have a fluid conversation and to enjoy time with your friends you know mm -hmm. like you have to think about what you're saying and it kind of like it gets tiring after like an hour of like trying to understand what everyone's saying mm -hmm. and back and forth and back and forth and if somebody says something you think of a joke in your head and it's already been like five minutes <laughs> since they said it <laughs> and you can't plug it in yeah, yeah, yeah. um so that was hard and honestly i work all the time yeah you know it's this is this is my baby and i have a vision for for where i want to take local luxury so I've been working seven days a week, yeah. like 16 hour days since I got here. And I have to take some time for myself in order to be able to maintain that rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, but making friends was not particularly easy because it, it takes people that have a similar lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and I work, I train, I have my two dogs. Mm -hmm. I go to bed at like 9.30. Yeah. So I live a very different lifestyle than what you can have in Tulum if you're looking for... You think you, could, you think you could outbench Carl? How much you bench? He plays 25. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I used to play football, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Now, no way. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. No, I do... What, what's but you do more. You do more like CrossFit. And yeah. Okay, I don't yeah. do heavy lifting much yeah. anymore. I play, like bench. I can do like two and a half plates, I guess. Okay, if yeah. I try. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't really done bench in like years. Oh. Well, we see that there's a lot of gyms also in the area, so that's really good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Went to 
Jungle Jungle Gym, so that's really good, cool too. The fact that like every everything is close to like gyms if you're if you're into fitness, yeah. that's amazing. Also, also like the fact that the Jungle Gym really is like it's a like jungle, jungle Gym, jungle gym full, everything's in wood, like wood and everything. It's yeah, yeah, such yeah. a vibe. Like it's from uh, Loco Mango, uh, it was right next to it. Yeah, yeah. right next a to it. Yeah. 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 But everywhere you go in Tulum, you stay in the vibe of Tulum. You know, like it's 100%. not like it's not like the aesthetic change. It's always like that's what I like the most about Tulum is the aesthetic, the vibe. But like going to places to places, the vibe is always like a nice, good vibe. You're like, okay, I'm in Tulum. Yeah. This is specific to Tulum. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like only in Tulum. You, you, I'm pretty sure you saw a picture of a certain like without putting the location, and people can be like, that's it Tulum. feels like aesthetic of Tulum. Like yeah, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. Because yeah. that's too long. And every villa that we've been to that you guys own, everything aesthetic as hell. Yeah. Like, yeah. I walk in and I'm like, oh shit, okay, yeah, this is nice. I, I take my phone, I'm like, picture, picture, left, right, right up, down. <laughs> and, you know, we got here. Even here, we're like, here, take a picture, up, down, everywhere. It was insane. But that's that's amazing. That's that's what's really good also. The fact that everything's perfectly done. Love that. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you a hot question. Are you in a relationship right now? No. Okay. So hot question is, how are the girls in Tulum? For the viewers, the guys are like, man, I want to come party in Tulum. Ha, huh? you've been here two years now. Tell us the scene, what it looks like. I'll actually tell you, uh, some, one of my friends told me, I think yesterday, yeah. um, Papaya Playa did a study of like the, the tourists that came to the, to the hotel. Okay. And they found a seven to one ratio of girls to guys. Of uh, girls to seven, guys. Uh, uh, I believe that. What's the ratio? Seven, seven to, to one. one. Yeah. I, nice. be- I believe that. Yeah. Damn, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's Toronto like? <laughs> yeah, Toronto like. <laughs> oh, um, okay, so, that, wow, that's good. But there's a lot of girls that like this kind of like aesthetic and exactly, lifestyle, yeah. you know, like here, Australia, Bali, like a lot of times you see like a lot of girls traveling, doing solo trips or amongst girls to kind of live this kind of like experience, you know? Mm. Yeah. So. Seven to one, I'm, I might as well just move here, bro. Of course, Shit. Of course. I mean, no, really. Of course, but I'll come with you, though. Hey. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, it, maybe it's your time to set the record straight, saying that you, you love Latinas. Uh, okay, well. Um, <laughs> it's a good place for that. Argen- Argentina, <laughs> Colombia. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So many. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll do no, it. No, uh, they're, they're banned from going to Colombia. Yeah. Who's there? I'm not. Well, no, for your own safety and for your own <laughs> future fatherhood. <laughs> we're, keep, we're keeping you guys away from Colombia for a little bit. <laughs> okay, so girls, okay, yeah, well, yeah. Party scene is nice. Girls is nice. What else about But what's, what's like, the, like the serious dating life like? Like oh. if you want to like settle down with someone. Because I feel like, yeah, partying, getting to know people is like one type of thing. But like dating for real, like, because don't get me wrong. There's a lot to do here, yeah. right? Um, but I just feel like maybe at some point it might get a little stale. So what's, what do you feel like dating is like here in Tulum? It's, it's neither here nor there for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm looking for, you know, I have everything together. Like I'm looking to like start a family and like settle down kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tulum is very transitory. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people that come to Tulum for a week. Uh, oh, I'm going to stay for three months <laughs> yeah, and they just yeah, wind yeah. up staying here. <laughs> and there are so many cases where, where yeah. that happens. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting into like wellness and all of that. Yeah. But I've had so many dates where we wind up talking about the moon in retrograde. And that's why this thing happened. And like, <laughs> oh, I get it. This is it. why the stars align. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I get it. And like some of that I like get into and I believe and, I, and all that. But like, yeah. Sometimes it's a bit too yeah, for me yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Mm. Um, That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> I totally understood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone understood. I was like, yup, he's right. <laughs> it's like in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Matthew yeah, McConaughey. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, do, do you go more for girls that are from Tulum or like they're tourists or like... No, I don't go for any tourists. Okay. Okay. Tourists come and go. No, I don't. Maybe he doesn't know. He's just like, you know, he's a yeah. girl or he's on a dating app. He's like... Mm, well, yeah, I guess on dating apps you wouldn't know. Yeah. But then like yeah, you ask, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but again, even even dating apps you can't really tell. Like let's say for like for Carl, he'll what? turn on his dating app for a week in Tulum. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's in Tulum. Yeah. For the week. 
You, you are you gonna say no? You're not. You're not saying that you're staying in Tulum. No, like, you say that you're leaving. Like I say, I'm, le- I'm saying I'm leaving in in 24 Thursday. hours. Yeah, basically. pretty much it. I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Stays for 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Um, I, I like it. You undersell but over deliver. Yeah, exactly. But then again, see me, me even with Michu, it's like so small and everything that we match with the same girls. Mm. We match Here? My the same, yeah. days. Yeah, like I match with a girl. I'm like, yeah, look at her, and he's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Every single girl. You want to say that the other story? What's the other story? Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so basically, what happened is uh, I was on the, the dating app Hinge, and then uh, I matched with uh, two girls. And uh, I was talking to both, whatever. I was telling one I, I was leaving on Tuesday and the other one I'm leaving on Thursday, whatever. And then uh, I'm talking to one in particular and then Michu matches with the other one. So he started talking to the other one as well. But we didn't know, like, like basically, look, they knew each other and we didn't know that. And the way we knew that they knew each other was like the first picture on, the, on both their, uh, their profile, profile was the same spot, mm-hmm. the same oh, background, okay. the same everything. So then I was like, I was like, what the hell? You mean it's like they, they know each other and then we met them and it was kind of awkward but it was, it was fun at the yeah, same Yeah, but time. you could tell they didn't give a fuck just by the do way. they live they here? Care. They didn't care. No, no. They, I think, they, no, do, no, they, do live they live here? They do. They live here. Yeah, they, they live yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm so curious to see who it is. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. I might, I might know everyone. I mean, they live here but they're, um, she's been here for like, like a month or two or something like that. Oh. Yeah. But, but, yeah, but Nico said he, he saw her yesterday. Yeah, and Nico, Nico was yeah, Nico, basically saying, <laughs> it was so funny. They were just at the same dinner table with friends. Yeah, yeah, Oh, those are friends of mine. What's in <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say hi for me. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just such a small world to know that they knew each other and then everyone knows everyone. But yeah. it's a vibe, but it's like, what the fuck? How? Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit high school-y sometimes. Well, yeah, you think Montreal is small and then you come here and it's even smaller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like we feel like locals now. <laughs> True. You know, like it's not like everywhere we would go out, like there was always somebody that we saw from the night before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You and we also, but since we came last year and we're like kind of like lost, but now this year we're not. Oh, lost. this year I was walking the streets and I uh, like like photo you know photographic you, memory. Yeah. I knew mm-hmm. I was going. Oh, this is this, this is the street, this is whatever, yeah. and then it was yeah. super like no problem. If I can ask you, let's say if we're not from here and we're the viewer, what are three reasons why I should come to Tulum? Um, why should I travel? Alex, visit? Alex is like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I get a munch older. Come. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for any viewers, what are three reasons? Could be any kind of reasons of why well, should I visit Tulum? Why, why should I come live that? in Tulum? Huh? He mixes his why and his what. What? He does that, eh? Yeah. I listen. Why are reasons? Can we, what are can we, <laughs> can we fuck off my accent, bro? <laughs> it's not even an accent, bro. <laughs> so, what are three reasons that people should come and visit Tulum? Um, there are a lot. So, I, I guess. For the viewer, number one, I guess, would be the beach. Mm. Um, on a nice day, the beach is exceptional here. Mm. Number two, some of the best parties that you'll have. Uh, they're very different kind of parties than you're used to, like in Montreal or stuff like that. It's yeah, we're still, we're still paying off our debt. <laughs> Where did you go? Uh, Papaya Playa. Yeah. yeah. Went on in the weekend. I think it was Saturday. No, Bagat- Saturday. Bagalum? Bagalum is nice Bagatel. as well. No, Bagatel. Bagatel, Bagatel was super yeah. Bagatel, nice. yeah. Amazing. Bagatel Wait, you should come back in January. I was in January. I don't think we, oh could, don't think we could afford January. January, <laughs> January from January, like from December 31st to February 1st is festival Mayhem. after festival after festival oh, after shit. festival. Also price should skyrocket. Yeah, Zamna, Day Zero, Rufus du Sol. Uh, okay, yeah. Tomorrowland. Everyone's coming. We went. We went to every spot that you suggested us. Yeah. By the way, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. The minute that you said that, we went to Treehouse. Yeah. Also Beautiful. Love Super it. Tulum vibes. Love it. Love but it. also very Montreal vibe. It's like a speakeasy. Yeah. It's like behind a, like a closed door. You have to pass by like a little boutique to get in. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, yeah, we went to we went to Bagatelle Bagatel, beach really party, and the fact that it was by the beach, it was like you had like the heat from Tulum and the like, humidity, but because you had the breeze from the ocean, yeah. we stayed we stayed there all day. Mm. We didn't move. We arrived at what, like two? Mm. Stayed there. And we stayed until sundown. sunset. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's always a vibe to party with your feet in the sand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. so nice. 
no roof. No. You're just like, you feel the wind, you're partying, you can go for a swim. And that's how, that's how they screw you, huh? They, like, they, they get you alcohol, you start drinking, and you're like, you know what? Another glass won't hurt. Mm. More food won't hurt. Mm. Yeah. And you haven't received the bill yet. And then the bill comes. <laughs> and you're like, we should have left six hours ago. <laughs> but for the experience, it was worth it. It's worth it was, every it was, single penny. Everything, yeah, everything that we've done is worth it. But that's the thing is that you could experience both uh, lifestyles because like we've done the eating tacos that are 80 cents each mm -hmm. to like having like lobster and caviar you know so it's True, like you could right. you could ha you could experience the best of both worlds in the same spot yeah mm -hmm. but like it's you go to like a big city like miami or whatever it's like it's the same lifestyle everywhere mm -hmm. you know whatever budget you have to come here in tulum you're good <clears throat> yeah if you don't want to spend much if you want to spend a lot you're, yeah. you're, you're good totally you're totally fine I just hope it stays like this for like for like the most part because like obviously you know like the places around like it's inflating right and yeah it's obviously more, it's, it's probably even more diff like difficult for the locals too right like they're kind of paying almost tur like tourism pricing you know yeah so it's the same for me right I, I, I rent an apartment mm. and rent prices are much higher than they should be because everything's on Airbnb mm. Mm. right so the owner can make double or triple renting it out to tourists mm -hmm. yeah. rather than renting it out long term to, to somebody like me. Thank God. Well, I guess not for the owners, but there's a saturation right now in like one bedroom studio, two bedroom. So a lot of those during the low season, they converted and went to long term because they were going, they had no reservations. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. there's just too many of them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so first reason beach, second reason. Uh, second reason partying mm. yeah. for those yeah. for those True. who like it True. Um, and third reason ah, it's hard the food's great but for me it was the wellness mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. for me it was the wellness like training sunshine um, wellness activities if you want to so like I do ice baths twice a week uh, what's really nice about it is like it's it's like a little ceremony mm. yeah so you go before you do breath work there's a little there's a person that's there that guides you through it a beautiful community of people that just meet up every weekend to do it together. And then you go and do the ice bath. It's like a little bit different than when you do ice baths when mm -hmm. you're like an athlete mm -hmm. and just yeah. go in like a garbage can with yeah, ice. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, <laughs> <"I'm> <laughs> dying, this one, they teach you how to breathe and like you, you, you get into it a little bit more and it's like a forced meditation, right? Yeah, you yeah. need to meditate to like get through the cold. Yeah. And I, stuff like that I've fallen in love with. For me, the, my motto since I've gone to Tulum is I work so much that any activity that inspires me to stay off of my phone is something that I like to do. Okay. Wow, love it. Quote that. And, and you see the people, everybody, everybody's in shape. Yeah. The, Actually, know, true, true. What the? And I young. haven't seen what? anybody For the in moment, it's very young still. Yeah, also. also yeah. yeah. True. But it's also like, I feel like it's like the hub for like, like digital nomads, yeah. you know, like content creators, podcasters, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and stuff like that. So... It kind of feels, it gives that like young energy. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't for here, if you were back home in Montreal, what is it that you would be doing instead? Getting out. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen snow in eight years. Wow. And I oh, don't plan on shit. ever seeing it again. I'm going tomorrow, man. This guy says, <laughs> you're going where? You're here, right? You're here. All you well, need to do going is not, back. Yeah, all you need to do is just not go back. Uh, let me cancel yeah. my flight. Yeah. Eight years. Yeah, I wish. Yeah, I'm gonna make it happen and come to Tulum. Tulum? Tulum? Yes. Or yeah. Colombia, Tulum? Both. Not Colombia, boys. Both. Yeah. Uh, Not Colombia. I mean, I'm happy in Tulum, so I can stay in Tulum. Mm. You're more come than to, welcome. Uh, um, so, Habibi, come to Dubai. Habibi, Habibi. come to Tulum. Tulum. <laughs> Car Carl's been learning Spanish. Really? Yes, yeah. The cameras are here? Right. <clears throat> tu eres muy bonita. Ooh. Oh, good <laughs> accent. <laughs> Nailed I was it. risen my, myself. What? No, nothing. You're risen yourself, you said? <laughs> No, that's a good line. That's a what good would be line. something else that you think Carl could use if you wanted to like talk to a girl? In Tulum? And then where's the in, camera? Well, he's in Tulum specifically, it's just Spanish in general, I guess. Yeah. I can't. I got to learn Spanish. Where's the camera for people to come to Tulum? In, 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 in Spanish? Spanish? Whatever the language. Where's the camera so they can come here? To it is muy bonito. I don't know how to say it in Spanish. <laughs> if you want to take it to a, a step yeah. hotter, you could say rica. Lika. Rica. 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 Yeah. Rica. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole phrase. Tu eres. Oh, tu eres muy bonita, Rica? No, replace no. bonita with Rica. Oh, okay. Tu eres, tu eres muy... Ooh, okay. <clears throat> tu? 
Tú eres muy rica. Bonita, oh. bonita is like pretty. Yeah. yeah. And rica is like delicious. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, delicious. Shit. Your turn, man. I can't. I'm not going to do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh my no, god! Dead, no. what, what would you say is like for you specifically? What would you say is like something that a girl can do to like really grab your attention? That's gonna like put her like apart from like like any other girl. Ooh, like physically or just in general? I, I'd say I, in general. In general, for me, is uh, any girl that inspires me in any way. Mm. I find that so hot. Mm. So like I don't know, be. Well, I was about to say, like, as someone, like, who's, like, well off the way that you are, like, your mindset is, is set straight and you're into wellness and all that, like, what more can someone inspire you more than you already inspire yourself? I can't for, for me, the, the way, I, like, my goal is to inspire myself, but that, that has nothing to do with how I can appreciate mm. seeing somebody else do something ins inspiring, you mm. know, like, I don't know, um, if, if someone's, like, if she's an artist, and you can see how much she's like passionate about what she's doing and like involved and loves it. And that's inspiring and that's really hot. Mm. You know what I mean? Like any kind of that kind of vibe can be applied to anything. If she's into business and has her own business and like has like we can have conversations over that and she challenges my ideas on some things like that's super hot. Yeah. Mm. Right. And what do you what kind of like dynamic are you looking for? Are you looking for someone that is working on her own future or would you rather have someone that's a little bit more like traditional kind of just stays home takes care of the kids yeah that's a great question man i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> i i like i jump from one to the other yeah because i you know i want to provide right and i want to bring the company to somewhere where i can provide for my family and yeah. potentially have somebody at home that takes care of the kids but i also find it really attractive like a woman that you know is driven and, and wants to go get it and we can like build an empire together. Yeah. So it's, I, I jump from one to the other and I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm like you, I think I, I've been jumping from between both two. I think I came down to a little bit of a conclusion where I, mm. I think it's like a timing thing. I think like if I meet someone, it could be in the phase where she is on her grind and she's doing the things that she wants to do that inspires her. And after that, like once we have kids, then it turns more into like a dynamic where I'm providing mm. in a sense. Yeah, you know? I like that. And then if ever she wants to go back at it, once the kids are old enough and she could go back, then she could go back into that lifestyle of wanting to continue to pursue her thing. Because you know? yeah. I feel like we're always like ha having to pick between the kind of dynamic we want where in reality it could just be like a, it could go through phases. Yeah. You know, mm. but I think like us as humans in general, we look at things like so linear. That's true. Especially yeah. when it comes to like su success, right? We give everything like a, like a chronological timeline, but it goes fucking up. It goes back down. It goes left. It goes back. It goes everywhere. You know, yeah. do you have like a bigger purpose for local or just for Alex yourself? When it um, both. Yeah. For loco, it's like, I want loco to be a, a household name. Mm. You know, I want in, in 10 years, somebody to think of loco in the same way that if they're thinking of a hotel, they think of Hilton. Mm. Mm. You know gotcha. what I mean? Like, oh, we want, a, we want a villa. We're going to Portugal. Oh, yeah, loco. It's a catchy name. Thank it you. Is. You can even see it like yeah. as a club. It is. Yeah. What, do you, what do you guys want to go tonight? Loco. 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 <laughs> Super easy to loco. What do you guys loco. say? Loco. Oh, loco. loco. Yeah, I like that. If you can choose a couple of villas, let's say four or five of your villas, of your 18 villas, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Can you give me a couple reasons on why I should choose a certain villa? Let's say here is Palacio Papaya or like Loco Mango, like whatever. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorites. This is the first super villa, I guess, that we, that we started representing mm -hmm. about a year ago. Um, the aesthetic is insane. Like every corner you, is Instagrammable. Yeah. There's a pool, <laughs> like you can walk from literally where we're, where we're filming, you can walk into the pool. Mm. There's a huge pool on the rooftop. The plot, the land is huge as well. Um, if not, there are two new ones that we just got in our portfolio. Well, actually, three new ones that we just got in our portfolio that are insane. There's Casa Don Rey. Okay. Yeah. Casa Don Rey is a 10 bedroom mansion. I want to see that one. Yeah. If you guys are here long enough, I'll bring you. We're leaving you tomorrow. Go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's, like, he's like too bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go see it for you yeah, exactly, I'll yeah. send you pictures <laughs> but I saw, at first I thought it was a hotel and then you guys came to, to tell me that it's, it's all one property yeah. that's what everybody thinks it's a 10, 10 bedroom mansion it's the only villa in Tulum that has an indoor nightclub sorry what? 
Yeah. So Fit. Indoor what? That's crazy. Indoor nightclub. I, sh- I showed you guys pictures. It's yeah. m- the one that has like a you can. There's what? a glass window and you can see a Buddha in the pool. That is crazy. Yeah, Matt doesn't listen to me when I talk. That's so. crazy. What the hell? Yeah. Okay, so, so okay, that's a good ass reason to come. I want a nightclub inside nightclub. That's yeah. crazy. That's Hello. that's fine. That's I've fun. heard of so many after parties there. I haven't personally been. That's new, no? It's it's two years. Oh. Yeah. Jesus, it looks brand spanking new. Yeah. Mm. Indoor movie theater, um, Butler with the property. Like it's honestly, it's insane. And the same that's owner insane. is now building another one that's going to be finished in two weeks. Mm-hmm. It's called Casa Arca, mm-hmm. and that one is, it's basically like let's say Casa Don Rey is like the bachelor pad. Mm-hmm. It's basically the bachelorette spot. Uh, okay, like the house is the house has an indoor rain like rainfall. There's a waterfall going in the pool. It's very flowy. The aesthetic is immaculate. Like I've never seen. It's gonna be the nicest place in Tulum, the nicest villa in Tulum. I think. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to leave. Yeah, this, uh, uh, you need to come back for that one. This is good ass reason to stay. Yeah, pretty much. That's insane. The aesthetic. Wow. It's it's day and night the, the the experience that we that we've had. Like once you're here long enough, like it's beautiful. And there's yeah. actually one last one that your friend stayed in. Your friend partied at. Uh, yeah, Matt, he said, yeah, Shiva? Casa Shalva. 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 Yeah, that one's like a minimalist kind of insane property. It's not, it's not like gigantic for parties. It's huge, but it's made as like a, like a minimalist palace where you go to like chill. Alex, I'm going to be honest with you. Every single one of your properties is made to be able to, <laughs> to host a party. <laughs> so sure, there's some bigger than others, but the, even the ones that are small. Yeah. Can't are, have a party. Yeah, are bigger than the houses that we have in Montreal for it's that true. price. So, so no partying for the past, what, two years? You haven't been partying, drinking? I haven't, I haven't had alcohol in the past year. Really? Yeah, I stopped drinking a year ago. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Tepesco Huite. No? It's like a, a plant. <laughs> Are we going to hear that? In the, <laughs> Anthony, are we going to hear that in the thing? It, it's, no? not, it's, not, it's, not, you know, it's not that deep. I mean, if somebody's getting arrested, we could just go live and report. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically uh, plant medicine. Um, you smoke it and it releases DMT mm. in your brain. Um, and I did that about a year and somewhat ago. Um, and in, since then, like I used to, I used to vape. Mm. I used to somewhat smoke weed. I used to drink. I stopped all of that from day to the next. Um, started going to the gym you know, religiously started taking my, my wellness much more seriously. Mm-hmm. Basically, the way I see it is I, I was revolving everything around work. And then after that, I was revolving everything around me, including work. Okay. Um, so it, it, it changed everything, yeah. Mm. It, it's funny because I guess it's hard for us to see the other side of the spectrum because we we've, never, we've never done drugs. We don't drink so it's kind of hard to see the difference in between that lifestyle and this one yeah so what do you feel the major differences are bef- like while consuming and now no longer consuming anymore oh that's a good question uh, physical benefits for sure yeah like i feel much fresher much sharper um the major difference i think the major difference is kind of the people you surround yourself with mm. as uh, as well as it being you know the the physical part of it mm-hmm. the people you surround yourself with kind of changes um and that can bring you to different places like now i want to hang around with people that are driven yeah that mm-hmm. are driven or that are working on you know themselves or their business or athletes um and it's changed the kind of activities that i do the people that i meet and it's bringing me one step closer every time to like trying to achieve my potential kind of thing like once you realize how much potential you have well then you kind of feel that it's a waste if you don't give it your all and like go for it Mm. but you're also big on also uh i guess in a way like teaching other people of your lifestyle too right because i know on social media you post a lot of your stories of what you're doing the walks that you do like the cold plunges that you do so i think you're also big on on sharing that experience with other people too, right? Yeah, um, I'm not particularly big on social media, but when I was posting like stories and stuff like that, sometimes it would happen that 
on the off chance that one person would message me like, hey, you motivated me to go to the gym today. Mm. I'm like, just, this is good. just for that reason alone, like it's worth doing it. Even if mm. sometimes you feel a little bit, like I personally sometimes feel a little bit like, hey, look at me, mm. uh, like I'm posting on social media. And it's hard to like work through that. Yeah. Um, but when you see that other people are inspired by it, it's like, it's a no brainer. Yeah, it outweighs the negative. Yeah. If exactly. there were to be any, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's, kind of, it's, it's the same thing for us too. Like it's th this whole thing kind of like happened all so very quickly. So it's like kind of hard to see like the impact that it actually does have on people. But every now and then like we'll, we'll, we'll get an email, we'll get a message and be yeah. like, okay, this is why we're doing this thing, you know, yeah. beyond just like for entertainment purposes, you know, I listen to your podcast yeah. and I see the story. Sometimes you post with like somebody like, ordered sushi and they're like they have your they have the podcast they on have the TV podcast and they're open, watching yeah. it like yeah. just for that like it's the other yeah. day i saw a story of a girl was in class watching a podcast and she had a, another student sitting in front of her also watching the podcast at the same <laughs> time, watching two different episodes and i'm like guys we're not that interesting <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, I have a message of a, like a, a feedback of what a, let me let me read it uh, hi, Matt. Hope you're well. Just wanted to tell you how much laughter you and the boys have brought to my life in the worst time of my life. I lost my brother on February 28th. He was 26. I found your podcast on my TikTok for your page a few days after his funeral. I remember laughing till I had tears in my eyes and not being able to figure out are these sad tears or happy tears. First time in weeks where I had a question, am I crying because I'm laughing for once or not because I'm fucking sad? Since then, I've been... Oops, sorry caught it since then oh, oh hello since then i've been listening to you guys uh and you guys bring me a hint of joy when it's really hard for me to find out right now so thank you so 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 much you guys help me out and you don't even know it plus it's a bonus all of you guys are fine as fuck <laughs> and that's it <laughs> and you guys make me laugh the hardest that's beautiful uh, it yeah. Is, yeah it feels good it warms the heart yeah but and we like, read our, our, the, the, those messages man it's so like it feels so good to, to see man but it's also a little bit scary at the same time you know mm -hmm. well it's like it's, a, it's like a lot of pressure to have like so much impact on someone's life mm -hmm. for something to us is just like a, a, a normal day-to-day -day thing that we do mm -hmm. you get what you mean you your know? words have weight yeah it has weight and like now like now i feel like even more responsible to uh, to continue producing content, you know, because like now with, with things like that, it's like I feel like I we we owe them even and in a good way. I say mm. owe oh, like in, in, in a nice way that it's like I feel like I can't stop now. Yeah, and, and I mean, we also want to keep on doing that. So, yeah, you know, right. that, that also helps, helps a lot. But there's one thing like it starting it off as like an idea, getting a little bit of traction to now having like this kind of impact on people where now it's like, fuck. <laughs> I love that though. I love yeah. that. I love doing that to people. Like just them being happy, fine. And all the comments that we get also in real life, just here in Tulum, just here in Tulum, we're walking in Bagatel, yeah. and then there's just a, a group of like I don't know, like ten people. They're like, "We watch your podcast. We love really? you." Really? Yeah. yeah it's wow. Crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, everywhere in Tulum, like it's yesterday at Palma. Yesterday at Palma. Girl came too. and she was like, "I love the oh, podcast. True. I like you guys." And took took pictures of her too. Yeah, and we took yeah. pictures crazy. yesterday. Also. Nice. Yeah. Well. The, Portugal, Spain, whatever, wherever we go, is just people are very nice and warm. They come and talk to us, and then we're very sweet with them, obviously, because mm. we love this. Like, we do this for you guys. Yeah. You guys are positive, like, really good vibes. Yeah. yeah. Little do they know we actually hate each other. In the <laughs> life. We're Can't forced to be together but now because Can't of this. Can't stand these guys. Fuck. Jeez. Shut up. Yeah, you too, you too but it, it, <laughs> I, th I think what's a cool experience, I feel, like, I feel like the thing about podcasting, it's like, we're here every single week, right? And we were talking about, you know, various topics and now it's been a year. And then you could see like the way that we talk, the way that we act, the things that we talk about have, has changed within a year, mm -hmm. right? So I think people get connected with us because they kind of in a way also grow alongside with us. Also, yeah. You know? And now they comment on our pictures and everything, like whatever happens on the podcast, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah they like, know every single thing, yeah. every single little detail. Right? They, hold us account they, they, hold, they hold us accountable to what we say. And at the same time, like, yeah, you know, it could feel like a little bit like invasive or like it kind of the same like uh, dynamic that you said, like posting kind of like, hey, look at me. But at the same time, it's like, it's, it's the world that we live in now. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything's being showcased, everything is out there. And I think with a lot of the work that you've done personally and a lot of the work that we've done, it's like, you can't do these things if you have so much care for what people have to say about what yeah. you do, yeah. you know? 
I mean, from moving from Montreal to Mexico. I, did you have anybody like try to talk you out of it? No, actually, like I, my North Star, my mom, I messaged her and I was like, um, I don't know what to do. I, I want to stay in Tulum, but I have my apartment. I have my car. Like, I'm not sure if it's the best move, if it's responsible. And she was like, is, is this really what you want to do? And I said, yeah. She's like, go for it. Like, yeah. I'll help you. I'll take care of the apartment. Mm. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. And like, like just having that little push, yeah. especially from your mom, mm. it just propulsed me. I was like, all right, let's go mm. all in. Well, I don't think we're going to be uh, taken to Montreal that, that, long. that much longer. Yeah, no, definitely not. Uh, but this was good. This was refreshing. Uh, thank you guys for giving us your hospitality. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I know. Absolutely. I mean... I mean, if you guys want us to come down here again, just, you know, <coughs> call us, text us. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be on the first flight out. Um, but guys, this was Alex. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, the Tulum special episode. Um, if you guys want to find out anything about the villas that we've been staying in, that you guys have seen on our stories or anything like that on our social media platforms, make sure to go check out Local Luxury. Um, before we sign off, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to give us five stars on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. It's been your boy, Sergio's Talks. It's your boy, Matt. It's your boy, Carl. And we were with... Capitan Happy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week. Ciao. <laughs>